Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a non-standard, maybe a transcendental equation. That's what they're usually called. We have e to the power 1 minus x equals square root of x. And we're going to be solving for x values. So at this point, you're probably guessing, okay, I got the solution. But we also need to check if there are any other solutions besides that one. Let's not say it though, right? So we have this equation, it's pretty non-standard, not very transcendental, because we have the exponential on one side and the radical on the other side. So we can't solve it by normal means, so we kind of have to do it a little differently. I'm gonna go ahead and show you the solution method that I'm using, and then also we're gonna be looking at a graph. Okay, ready? Let's get started. So to be able to solve this problem, again, like I said earlier, that it's okay to guess and check, but we need to make sure that we are finding all the solutions. So let's start by splitting it up. Uh, e to the power one minus X can be written as E to the power one divided by E to the power X. And that is equal to square root of X. This is at this point where I multiply or cross multiply and I get square root of X multiplied by e to the power x equals e. Nice. Now, if you look at the left-hand side carefully, and if you're knowledgeable about a special function, which is called Lambert's w function, then this problem should be fairly easy for you. Even if you don't know what it means, I'll tell you all about it, don't worry. So we'll get into that. But at this point, again, it's always you know, a good idea to guess and check. But let's go ahead and manipulate the equation on the left-hand side. And to do that, we're going to go ahead and square both sides. And when we square, square root of x is going to become x. And e to the power x squared is just e to the power 2x equals e squared. Great. So this is pretty close to the form that I'm trying to get. And let me tell you what that form is. I'm trying to get something like t e to the t. So when I apply Lambert's w function to it, I'm going to get a t as an output. So that's how Lambert's w function works, which is also called the product law. If you're entering it in Wolfram Alpha, just write product log as one word, and you should be able to get the answer. But of course, depending on the branch, depending on the values, depending on the range, whatever, you're gonna get multiple values, right? There's definitely, this function is not one-to-one, -one, so it's not gonna have a unique inverse, if you know what I'm talking about. Because if you invert this, you're going to have W inverse of T will be T to the, in other words, this is the inverse of Lambert's W function. Okay, cool. So to get there, uh, we do need T E to the T. So this is need, this needs to be the same as that one. Notice that we're missing a two. So let's go to multiply both sides by two. And now we got our structure because now we can go ahead and you know, just write this as 2x so that now our, our t is going to be that. So if you apply Lambert's w function to both sides, then you should be getting this. But also look at the right hand side. You have t to the t or c to the c, and that's going to be your t or c. So when you apply it on both sides, from here you're going to get the 2x, and from here you're just going to get a 2. In other words, 2x equals 2 will give you x equals 1. But again, this is probably something you checked before. You guessed and checked, right? But is that the only solution? Could we have arrived at an equation like this in a different way? For example, think about an alternative. What would happen if you had the following? Right? And when you squared both sides, you would still get e squared. And would you be getting x equals 1 from here again? But guess what? x equals 1 was, would not satisfy this equation. Why? Because we introduced an extraneous solution. So it's not going to work here, but it's going to work in our case because both sides are positive. Does that make sense? Okay, that's the difference. So you need to be very careful. But at least we know that x equals 1 works. Now, you didn't really have to do it the Lambert's W function method because you could also, you know, just guess and check like I said earlier. Okay, square root of x, e to the x equals e. So from here, it's clear that x equals 1 because 1 times e equals e, right? Or after you put it in this form 
It's actually more clear when we wrote it as 2x e to the 2x equals 2e squared. It's probably clear that 2x corresponds to 2 here because 2x is 2 here. You get it? If 2x equals 2, then we have a 1 to 1 correspondence. But again, you need to check with the, uh, I mean, you need to check whether there are any other solutions. So it kind of brings us to the multiple branches of the Lambert's W function, but there's actually an easier way to find if there are any other solutions or if this is the only solution, okay? So let's go ahead and go, go back to the original problem that was e to the power one minus x equals square root of x. So now I'm gonna call this f of x. So f of x would be e to the power one minus x and g of x would be square root of x. What do you know about these functions? Well, first of all, e to the power x is exponential and it's increasing because e is greater than one. But e to the power negative x on the other side is gonna be decreasing because you're replacing x with negative x, makes sense? And you can tell by differentiating this function so if you differentiate a function, uh, this is going to be uh, the derivative of the exponent, which is negative 1 times e to the power 1 minus x. It's like, remember, e to the u, if you differentiate, you get u prime times e to the u. So this is, this is always positive, this is always negative, which means f of x is a decreasing function. What about g of x? If you differentiate it again, it'll tell you the derivative of this is going to be 1 over 2 square root of x. And as you know, this is greater than zero because square root of x for real values of x is greater than zero. So we have an increasing function and a decreasing function. Guess what? They will intersect at a single point. Does that make sense? Because you have a situation like this, which I'm going to show you the graph as well. But one of them, one of them looks like this. The other one looks like that. I mean, the shapes and the curvatures and all that stuff could be different, but get the main idea they're, they can only intersect at a single point. There was a really nice problem. A guy walks, um, like hikes every day from point A to point B. And then, of course, uh, he's following the same path every day. And I think there was a question about something like, uh, prove that there is a location between A and B that he passes through at the exact same time, back and forth. Make sense? Of course, for this, you can think about the intersection of two graphs, one increasing, the other one decreasing. Anyways, there was a really good problem, and I think it was from a book like Problem Solving Strategies or The Art of Problem Solving, something like that. Anyways, if I find it, I'll share with you, but that's a beautiful book that I own. I own a lot of problem books, by the way. They're awesome. Anyways, so this is pretty much uh, what we are finding from here. Only one solution because one is decreasing, the other one is increasing. Let's go ahead and take a look at the result from Wolfram Alpha, I mean the graph from Wolfram Alpha, as you can see, x equals 1 is the only solution to this equation. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.